Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. In this video, we are going to talk about microalgae culture. Microalgae usually grow in either marine or freshwater systems. These are primary producers in the oceans that convert water and carbon dioxide to biomass and oxygen in the presence of sunlight. Microalgae species have provided a numerous opportunities in different sectors for the benefits of mankind. Microalgae possess several valuable bioactive compounds like lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, carotenoids and vitamins. Microalgae is generally considered as important source of nutrition and is used greatly in the aquaculture of other organisms. These microorganisms have got great role to play in the coastal and marine aquaculture of fish, mollusks, shrimps and oysters. Apart from this, the phytoplankton is also tasked for a special role in aquaculture to meet the nutritional requirements of the larvae and as well as for bioencapsulation. Now the procedure for the phytoplankton or microalgae culture involves a wide range of aspects like the isolation of the required species, preparation of the suitable culture media, maintenance of the culture both at laboratory scale and as well as large scale under controlled conditions of light, temperature, aeration and their constant supply in different phases of growth. Now let's discuss each aspect separately. Starting from isolation of the required species. Sterile cultures of microalgae used for aquaculture purposes may be obtained from specialized culture collections. Alternatively, laboratory techniques can be used. There are different techniques for the isolation of microalgae. We can use micro manipulation, serial dilution, streak plating, density centrifugation, antibiotics. The choice of a particular technique depends on the type or specific strain of microalgae to be isolated. Suitable culture media. Concentrations of cells in phytoplankton cultures are usually kept higher than those found in nature. So because of this, the cultures must be enriched with the nutrients to compensate for the deficiencies in the sea water. These macronutrients include mainly nitrate, phosphate and silicate. Silicate is particularly used for the growth of diatoms which utilize it to produce the external shell. The micronutrients basically comprises various trace metals, vitamins like thiamine, cyanocobalamin and also biotin. There are two of the most widely used enrichment media which are suitable for the growth of most of the algae. These are Volley medium and the Gillard's after medium. Now regarding the maintenance of the culture, first condition we have is light. As is the case with all plants, microalgae also photosynthesize that is they use inorganic carbon to make organic matter. And to drive this biochemical reaction, light is used as the source of energy. So because of the importance of light, its intensity, spectral quality and photo period must be considered. Light intensity requirements vary greatly with the culture depth and the algal culture density. With higher depth and increased cell concentrations, it becomes necessary to increase the light intensity so that it can penetrate through the culture. Light may be natural or supplied by fluorescent tubes. But remember, too high light intensity may lead to photo inhibition. Apart from this, Overheating should be avoided. Fluorescent tubes that emit either blue or red light should be of the first choice because these are the most active portions of the light spectrum for photosynthesis. Next is pH. 
The pH range for most cultured algal species lies between 7 to 9. A failure to maintain an acceptable pH range can result in complete culture collapse because of disruption of many cellular processes. In algal culture with high density, the use of carbon dioxide corrects for increased pH. Aeration and mixing Mixing of the different contents, including the media and the algae itself, is necessary to avoid sedimentation of the algae. It's done to make sure that all cells of the population are getting equal supply of light and nutrients. This helps to avoid thermal stratification. It can improve the exchange of gases between the culture medium and the air. Exchange of gas is really important because the air contains the carbon source required for photosynthesis in the form of carbon dioxide. Temperature the optimal temperature for phytoplankton cultures is usually between 20 to 24 degrees centigrade. Although this may need to be varied according to the changed composition of the culture, type of species and strain cultured. Most of the times, commonly cultured species of microalgae can withstand temperatures between 16 to 27 degrees centigrade. Microalgae best grow in optimal temperature range because temperatures lower than 16 degrees centigrade is going to slow down growth. And on the other hand, temperatures above 35 degrees centigrade are lethal for a number of species. Salinity Marine phytoplankton are found to be extremely tolerant to changes in salinity. Most of these species show best growth at a salinity that is slightly lower than that of their native habitat. This state of salinity is usually obtained by diluting seawater with tap water. Growth Dynamics The growth of an axanic culture of the microalgae is characterized by five different phases. First is lag or induction phase. During this phase, Little increase in cell density occurs. It's relatively long when an algal culture is transferred from a prey to liquid culture. But in case of cultures inoculated with exponentially growing algae, those cultures have short lag phases. Second is the exponential phase. During this phase, the cell density increases as a function of time. Third one is phase of declining growth rate. In this phase, cell division slows because the nutrients, light, pH and carbon dioxide or we can say other physical and chemical factors actually begin to limit growth. Next is the stationary phase. In this stage, the limiting factor and the growth rate are balanced. This balance lead to a relatively constant cell density. Finally, it's followed by death or crash phase. In this final stage, water quality deteriorates and nutrient depletion is observed to a level which is unable to sustain growth. So there is rapid decrease in cell density and the culture eventually collapses. This was all. Thanks for watching.